Hello everybody, and welcome to episode 3 of Military Mutterings, where myself, Jack Fletcher, and my good friend... Me, Kevin Janssen... ...shall be discussing the Soviet Yak-38, a VTOL aircraft. Now, why were VTOL aircraft introduced? Well, it was because of runways, or well, let's say the lack of runways. Mm. As jet power became way more common, or just the norm, to be fair, jet engines are very delicate, and if rubble gets inside of it, well, the whole thing goes boom. So proper, large, clean um, asphalt runways had to be made, but, you know, if you're in a war, runways are going to get bombed. And that's the whole fucking problem behind it. You don't want your runway to be bombed all the time, because you're going to have to reconstruct it and repair it, and, oh well, yeah, all that annoying stuff. Hmm, this is an issue, and an issue it is. So, as a result, <laughs> some individuals started thinking, and uh, some gentlemen up at uh, Porkler Sidley uh, developed the uh, Kestrel, which is the prototype of the Harrier. And, well, once that was demonstrated, everyone got a little bit, oh, bloody hell, they've done something. And one of the main contenders, the um, Soviet Union, who at the time were the enemy of the uh, Western Allies, were um, th they decided to make their own vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. And that started with the Yak-36, but we'll discuss that in a bit. However, we shall go into how exactly this aircraft can fly. As you can see here, from the blue arrows <laughs> representing air and the orange arrows representing lift or thrust or whatever you want to call it, let's call it Billy Bob, we shan't do that, that would be silly, and we only deal with seriousness here. Sure, keep telling yourself that. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, the two rear nozzles of the uh, orange engines they are able to be vectored so you can have the uh, so you know you can adjust it so you know oh look i'm hovering up and then it turns to rear and oh look i'm going forwards now however the ones at the front cannot be moved they are less powerful engines and are there primarily for lift and landing and of course you have a couple of you know little air stuff just around Probably to make sure it doesn't overheat. Next! <laughs> well, actually, go back a little bit. Like When you look at VTOL planes, you do sort of have two distinct ways of doing it. You can, you can go the Harrier way, where you have all of your engine power, this one single engine, having multiple nozzles that can turn around the place. Or you do it this way with the Yak-38, where you get extra more engines to stabilize the aircraft with. But the problem with that is you gain a whole lot more weight because you're going to have to add additional engines in. But it is a simpler system than what the Harrier uses, so I suppose that's why they did this. Mm, this may be one of the reasons, but we will never know. Well, we could know, but we don't do that much in depth. <laughs> We're not historians <laughs> yet. We'll be here for one and a half hours if we do that. Yes, and that's one and a half hours we probably don't have. Mm. Uh, yes, the quality and hardship that goes into the military mutterings, if only. <laughs> so, we're starting this off with the prototype Yak-38. This is the Yak-36M. Well, there is one other Yak-36. This was one of the first um, VTOL aircraft that Russia made. But the Yak-36M that you see before you right here is completely different from it. They might share the same overall name, that being Yak-36, but this is very much its own separate thing. Now, the thing that makes the Yak-36M differ from the, any old other Yak-38 is it's lighter and it has less powerful engines. You know, it's what you expect for a prototype vehicle. It's just, it's smaller, it's less powerful, it's just there to test the whole concept and see if the thing worked or not. But now, on to the actual production thing. Yes, time for the Yak-38. Oh, what a nice photograph. Now, some general oh, really... characteristics for this aircraft. You've got a crew of one. You know, it, uh, you know, just your good old Ivan pilot there doing piloty things. You know, you're looking at a um, speed of a few hundred miles an hour, maybe. This depends on whether it's a standard Yak-38 or the Yak-38M, which we will get onto 
in a bit. But the standard Yak 38 can go up to, I believe, 800 miles an hour. I believe it's somewhere around the Mark 0 0.9, 0 0.95, something yes. around those lines. So it can't go the speed of sound, unless, of course, you're going in a dive. But that doesn't count, you 262 pilots. It doesn't <laughs> count. And what else does it have? Well, it has a very, very nice bit of ordnance it can carry. Now, it doesn't have any guns actually built into the fuselage, unlike many other aircraft. In fact, VTOL aircraft often didn't have this at all. I mean, even the Harrier's guns were on pods underneath its fuselage. So you're looking up for this aircraft, its ability to carry 23mm gun pods. You can carry one or two pairs of them um, in the external pylons. Uh, you've also... Uh, You've also um, got the um, uh, another gun that you can use. And contrary to what I just said, this was apparently developed and designated the VSPU-36. Yes, it was. Like, I was about to say that. If you if you didn't mention it yourself, I was going to say. Mm, so it's it basically just... It's basically an integrated gun part. So instead of it being on a pylon, it's just actually plopped inside of the belly of the aircraft. So, which Only it had less ammunition, if I'm correct. Yes, instead of 250 rounds per gun, it only had 160 rounds. Now, could you say, could you argue that it's part of the actual hull of the aircraft, or that it's just a pod? Uh, I would say it's part of the aircraft, mainly because the ammunition was also inside the plane. Oh, uh, really? Oh, fair enough then. Well, as a result, yeah. disregard what I just said. <laughs> pretend it never happened. Yes, but don't pretend too much if we don't go into the <laughs> realm of fantasy here. Only a little bit. Yes. So you had this so you had this you know, aside from that, you're looking at all external weaponry. You've got your external gun pods, your one internal gun that we just mentioned that I completely forgot about. <laughs> You've also got your Hard points, it's got four hard points that can carry, you're looking at around two tons of ordnance, depending on which ton you use. Uh, you can have different varieties of rockets, anti-ship missiles, air-to-air -air missiles, bombs and fuel tanks. And in terms of the bombs, this also includes two nuclear RN-28 bombs. <laughs> so just imagine so your... A vertical takeoff and landing jet, and you need to go and drop a nuclear payload on something. Good luck. Although, I do think if you want to carry the nukes or any other like really heavy armament, I don't think VTOL is an option anymore. I think it's more like STOL, the, the, mm. the short takeoff, so you will need a little bit of runway for that. Yes. Yeah, Otherwise, what... you're just too heavy. Yes, yeah, could you imagine a helicopter trying to do that? That'd be ghastly. <laughs> Chinook, just uh, loads of nuke in the back of it. Very, very dangerous, fortunate son for the Huey. <laughs> right, now, the aircraft entered service in 1976, but it was produced from 1971 to 1981, <laughs> and all variants were retired from service in 1991, so I believe the primary version, at least, was retired in 1991. And to be fair, you probably presume all the other variants were as well, considering you only had two other variants. Well, proper variants, should I say. And in fact, we shall go on to one of those variants. Ah, uh, yes, the Yak-38M. So when you have a vehicle, you, 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 you've developed a plane, it, it works really well and it's absolutely fantastic. What do you do first? Well, you're going to make it better. And that's what the Yak-38 is. You just slap more powerful engines inside of it. So this pretty much made the aircraft much more powerful, and it also allowed us to carry much more weaponry on board. Mm, did well, they also maybe... strengthen the wings? Yeah, they did, to accommodate the heavier uh, weaponry, of course. Like, I say more weaponry, but that's sort of incorrect. It still has the same four pylons, but it can just carry larger rocket pods or heavier uh, loads. Mm. So it, it, it really, the differences are more in uh, flight performance rather than weaponry, if you ask me. Like, weaponry is only just a small little change, but yeah, well, that that's really it. But I must say, only 50 of the Yak-38M were produced. I don't know, I think, wasn't it like 140 somewhere around there for the regular Yak-38? Oh. It's kind of, like, it's kind of weird when you've got a much better Yak-38M version and it's only 50. Like, I, I would have thought there were more of them. 
Well, you know, this was coming to the end of the life of the Soviet Union, so maybe they decided ah, we'll yeah. just keep this version and build a small number of the better version in case things really go sour and pear-shaped. Yeah, that is true. Yes. But honestly, yeah, you already told so much about the Act 38. There's not really much else to say about the Act 38M. Only it looks that it's nice. just better. Yeah, it looks nice, just like all the Act 38s, to be honest. Hmm, this is very true. They look, they <laughs> almost remind me of a combination of either an SU 7 or a MiG 21 and a Harrier. It's got a little bit from the F-104 too, don't you think? Mm, I don't like know. the pointy nose on the cockpit? Just a mm. little bit. I'd say that's got more in common with the Etendard. Yeah, true. Or may maybe it's the short the the short thin wings that sort of make me think of an F-104. Yeah, probably. I definitely said the cockpit's more and the nose is more of an F of the uh, 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 uh Etendard. Yeah. Yes. Right, oh. next vehicle. Oh, ho, ho, yes. <laughs> Long nose. Take a Yak-38, slap a U on the end of its name, and all of a sudden you've got the two-seater trainer there in the Yak-38 U. Again, not really much to say here, aside from only 34 were produced, and that it's got a long nose, and of course extra canopy space so that it could fit both the pilot and the trainer. Again, not really much to say about this aircraft, other than it's got a very long nose. Oh, they must have done some serious calibrating or just changing around the fuselage because that's a whole lot more nose heavy now. Yeah. So if you want to vertically take that thing off, you're going to have to change around some stuff. Mm, mind you, no one knows. And for those people wondering, did it still have the integrated gun pod? Well, look closely. The nose is drooping down, so if the gun pod that was mounted on the belly would fire it to go straight into the cockpit. So I don't think this one was armed. Ah, uh, you never know. Maybe it's like the Concorde and has a droop snoop that we don't understand. <laughs> droop snoop. <laughs> the um, yes, I I I do have a feeling that it may have been able to carry you know weapons on the underwing pylons for a if things went yeah. really bad and b to help simulate weapon uh, dropping for the pilots. Considering again, only a small number of aircraft were built, so you'd really want experienced pilots flying these. Yeah. True. Only yes. like 10. <laughs> yes. No, the only 10 that know how to fly it. There, yes, 10 pilots for 231 aircraft. Well, how many trainers were built? Uh, 34. There were 34 trainers. Yeah, so, 34 pilots now. <laughs> yes, and for your other 200 aircraft, you'd want very experienced airmen anyway, so yeah, I do believe true. that it could have probably carried stuff on its undoing pylons. Actually, before we move on, something we should probably mention is with the vehicles these um, planes operated off. Yes! Aircraft carriers. Um, well, not really, not actual... Like, what was it? Wasn't it the Kiev-class aircraft carrier? Probably. And they're, not really, they're not really carriers, because it's got a very short little runway, so it's specifically made for just the VTOL planes. Hmm. Which is quite interesting. Well, and helicopters, of course. And yeah, so I, I was correct. It is indeed the Kiev class aircraft carrier. I thought we'd have at least mentioned it. So this is the aircraft carrier the uh, most of the Yak 38s operated off of. Yeah. I, I do believe they landed on other vehicles too from time to time, but it was mostly the Kiev class. Yes. Anyway, for the next vehicle. Ah, yes. The one final little weird one, to be honest. So yes. this is the supposed continued version of the Yak-38, the Yak-39. No, just do Yak-38 plus one, and there you go. This one, well, there's, there's honestly not a whole lot that we know of it. And if this photo, this little drawing we have here is correct, we can see that this has larger wings. So mm. I think the, the whole idea behind this was to make the aircraft more of a multi-role vehicle. Just give it more paid out op payload options. So with the larger wings, you do actually get more lift, so you can carry more weaponry. And it also mentioned that this one is going to have a built-in 30 millimeter um, cannon. So it, it sort of just looks like a more streamlined, all-around, multi-purpose vehicle, if you ask me. Yes, with wider wings. I must say, if that if that drawing is correct, I do quite like the looks of that. Because the one thing that makes the Yak-38 so recognizable is the short wings. But with longer wings like that, I, I quite like the looks of it. Mm. Plus, I only just saw this. The wings are um, mounted higher on the fuselage, not in the middle, like you see on the Yak-38. 
Mm. Fair. Another Very thing, interesting. All another of this. thing that would make it recognisable is the fact that it takes off without the need of a bloody runway. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. Is there anything you wish to add, Kevin? Not really. Oh, no, I don't know. There's one little thingy. So the Yak 38 was, well, the the plans of actually building one was started, but it was um, it was discontinued in 1985 because the Bureau wanted to continue on the more promising VTOL Yak 41. Yes. Or in, from, from the Allied side of things, more known as the Yak 1 for 1. But I think that'll be a subject for another video. Yes, maybe, or maybe not. We don't know. Who knows? Yes, and uh, well, uh, something I will add is that uh, in these uh, trying times of uh, of many great ailments plaguing the globe currently, uh, mm. all we can really offer you is uh, information about useless tat that you can wow your friends with, and by wow them, they will look at you gone out and say, "I didn't need to know that," and you will go, "I know." I'm probably so, going to have to correct you here. I think you mean slightly dodgy, maybe inaccurate information. <laughs> yes, yes. As say, uh, we uh, although we try and make things as accurate as possible, everyone makes mistakes. I mean, look at me. I was born. Oh, he do be like that. Yes, <laughs> this is very true. Right, so, in conclusion, Yak-38, it's VTOL and Russian. So, here we shall leave off. Happy New Year, everyone. And oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, and uh, let us hope that this year we'll see many mutterings of the military variety. Until mm. next week, where we shall discuss a ground vehicle. Ooh, can't follow wait to see which one. Yes, follow the social medias for more information on that nearer to the time. Ciao for now. See you.